Good evening, welcome back to the Angry Cast and Fallout Shelter 2023. How y'all doing? Uh, I am unfortunately recording again because uh, my schedule just is sucks. In fact, I've, I've been late on a couple of things that I wanted to post uh, because of work and everything else. Uh, having a dog, and that's going to tie directly into what we're going to talk about today. Having a dog has, has become a real cha a game changer. Um, but it is 4th of July, the week of 4th of July, so happy birthday, America. You don't look that much older than 240-some years. Uh, you look good for your age. Sometimes I don't understand your decisions, but, you know, well, we're, you know, we do what we can. Um, so that got me to thinking. It's for the week of 4th of July, and as early as I can remember, um, the things that I, you know, I, I was a holiday guy. I was a guy that liked the holidays that, you know, the things happened around the holidays that centered around the holidays. And 4th of July was no different in a sense. It wasn't mainly a family kind of holiday per se. It, 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 you know, it could go that way. It doesn't always have to be that way. But in terms of, of doing something, that was always mandatory. Mandatory fun, you know, that kind of thing. Like, well, Thanksgiving and Christmas, it's like, you know, yeah, get time with the family, gather around, enjoy a nice meal like that. And the same thing kind of goes with, with 4th of July. Now, I don't know what other countries do in terms of uh, some sort of a celebratory event surrounding an independence, in a sense. Like, we all know what Americans think of when it comes to Cinco de Mayo, which is ridiculously out of context and, you know, <laughs> appropriating someone else's culture and their holiday uh, to suit their needs to just drink copious amounts of alcohol. Um, but the thing about, you know, this is ours. This is this is our holiday. This is all us. This is, you know, everything else. You know, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, only if you're Irish, but everybody does it. Uh, this <laughs> this this is our this is this is your day, America do it you know have fun with it and the idea being that like what do we do with that day i i <laughs> i mean you have three you have two main holidays centered around summer and centered around that kind of idea now one other being memorial day which should be a solemn day it should be a day of remembrance of those who have fought to protect the freedoms that we say take for granted on a regular basis and had given their lives um, but no, it's an excuse for us to open up the pool, have a day off from work, barbecue, drink copious amounts of alcohol, and shoot off fireworks. And that's just like, that's kind of like a, a, a preamble. It's pregame. It's, 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 it's an exhibition. It's an exhibition for, the, you know, the main season, the, open, the regular season game, which is the 4th of July, where free with every firework is an opportunity to lose a digit. That, you know, diff. Free digit removal with every purchase of fireworks. That's that's always there on the box. It should be at least, anyways. Uh, and and Pennsylvania, and I don't know about other states, but Pennsylvania has gotten further down the rabbit hole of, of stupidity, I think, in allowing fireworks to just be purchased. Now, I was always that guy who I remember driving to other states to go buy fireworks. Like we would go on vacation to Myrtle Beach, and we would stop and get fireworks at the side of the road. And, you know, the things you can buy, like the full scene from Joe Dirt, a buying the thing, you know, the whiz bangers and the poppers and the big, you don't got any of those things, those kind of things, and bring them home and then setting them off in our backyard, hoping that nobody calls the cops or that we call an ambulance. But since we have made them illegally allowed to be bought and set off in PA, it has gotten ridiculous. Like we all know, and people do it around New Year's Eve too. People do it on New Year's Eve and that, that always been nuts. Now, I never really cared that much before I kind of like hit a certain age of adulthood. And I think mainly because having a child sort of sets the tone for how cranky you get around those types of holidays. <laughs> and 4th of July, setting off fireworks um, and having a, and now having a dog has become a different thing altogether because it's just like, listen, there are people in this world that and in, in our animals that do not like that sound, that do not like that startled thing for whatever reason. And we don't, and, and yeah, granted, hey, it's all right. We were allowed to, it's been, it, you know, we, we, the law says we can do it, but should we, you know, should we? And I understand that, you know, people who know that this event is coming up can prepare themselves. They can, you know, go to their doctor, maybe get something to help, the, you know, keep them calm, you know, do some whatever they need to do, some coping uh, exercises, whatever. Whatever it is that they do to address their issues, legitimate and validated, 
to handle this type of event, yeah, I can understand that. But animals don't have that awareness. Animals don't know. They can walk in and like, oh, I'm going to go walk in the kitchen, grab a you know, bite of kibble, look at the, oh no, it's that time on the calendar. Oh dear, we're going to have a fireworks. I better uh, get my thunder shirt on and let's go. They don't know that. Like They have no clue. They just think the world's completely gone ass up and they're going to run around and scream and yell and try to dig through the carpet and try to get to the basement through, you know, a level of housing. Um, my dog, you know, we've had now for almost a month is the same way. I thought she was going to be cool and she was cool for a little bit, but in coupling with a full moon, which I know people say the full moon doesn't really affect dogs, but it does. It kind of does. And yeah, it, uh, it has done so. And she has really, uh, you know, gone crazy the last couple of nights uh the weekend before the fourth i i I can only imagine what we're going to be doing on tuesday um as i record this ahead of time because i know what kind of a a problem i'm going to have coming up this week but i I, you know i don't know what she's going to do but i have a feeling it's going to be bad so i am just getting prepared to you know keep her safe uh on in the event that she starts to go completely nuts when the fireworks start shooting off on on tuesday But that brings me back to my original point was things that we used to do, you know, things we used to do on the 4th of July that was, you know, our holiday, America, patriotism, whatever. And I remember as an early age, we would always go in town and I grew up in, in, uh, you know, small, small town in southwestern PA uh, where, you know, we can see West Virginia from our house. Uh, The Manson Nixon line is right outside our door. And yeah, that's just all you got to need to know about that. But we would go downtown to the to the river park or whatever and we would sit and watch them set off fireworks now growing up was like it was it was down in town from the bridge uh then it was moved to the park and then it was moved back to the you know town and a couple of times i got to watch them indoors from you know uh, an office building and all kinds of fun stuff um so yeah there's been you know time to to, or, or there's been times where i've been outdoors indoors and all over the place to see fireworks growing up and my initial understanding of what fireworks were for 4th of July was an hour long show where you set one off every two minutes. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So we would sit there and we just be staring at a dark sky and all of a sudden you're to, and then sometimes you see the flash before the big boom. And that would happen for like every two minutes we would hear and you get the the crackles and the the little you know whistles after that like in my voice as the sibilance really kicks in and then it would go on for like maybe 50 minutes 55 minutes like that every two so we get maybe like what 25 30 40 maybe 50 um at most individual fireworks to go off and then sometimes they'd, they'd, they'd sneak in an extra one just to see if you're paying attention and it'd be two going off at once but then we'd have an, a finale that was just a... And it would just be su- successive fireworks going all the time. And that was like, you know, that was a five minute, you know, push to the end. And then it was done. And maybe not even five minutes, maybe like two minutes. And then we were done. So it was like, ah. Uh, the exasperation of the finale happening. And then you couldn't see anything smoke heavily on the water. And we'd all pick up our lawn chairs and we'd go home. And some, there'd be a smattering of applause and that would be it. And then we put everything back in the box for another year and come back and do it again. And then I went to um I went to Pittsburgh at a baseball game when they had fireworks. And it was, oh my gosh, save for the game. You know, come to the game, save for the fireworks. And it was like it was like successive, like in one right after the other, sometimes more than one at a time. And I was like, well, this is a little bit different. And that was like, you know, back in the days of Three River Stadium. And then I went to uh, Disney for school, for band in high school. And we went to, I think back then it was called MGM. I think it's Universal or no, I think it's called Hollywood Studios now, maybe. I don't know. It's where they had the the Star Tours and the Indiana Jones thing and um, the, the, you know, all that stuff. Um, but we had 
like the, outside they did a fireworks show at night and this was amazing because it was just like shit's flying off from every different direction it's not just going straight up it's going left to right it's got music to it it's all ridiculously nuts this is you know this is stepping it up a bit that's pretty damn cool so fireworks like i knew like oh, wait a second we're not doing it right and then i watched on tv other fireworks shows like oh my gosh we're just doing it you know my little podunk town we're just you know really doing it wrong or we just don't have the technology or or the 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 skill to do it the way everybody else does it and maybe it's a good thing because it could probably lead to a lot of disaster if if we don't know what we're doing so that's probably a good thing and then that was like you know the highlight of everything and then when you see people do it on their own and like you know buy their own and set them off and people think they're like i know what i'm doing and they go crazy doing all that it's amazing how that all happens and <laughs> they don't they don't die you know like we don't set things on fire and people don't die so it's kind of neat that people can actually have that ability and not have like a, a a certification although some of them probably are some probably are certified and probably are um you know someone who had some training before and they're you know coming kind of doing it now on their uh you know their second second act third act or whatever so, you know, there's that. Now, that covers fireworks. That's the big thing. And we covered the big thing at first. And we're going to, like, backtrack to the stupider stuff as we go. Like, the food. The food. The food alone, I love I love a barbecue. I love hamburgers and hot dogs on the grill. I love doing that. Pasta salad, some corn, you know, baked beans, some coleslaw. Um, that's great. But we kind of got, like... I, I, it's kind of the thing, like, I, I never get tired of turkey and ham at Thanksgiving and Christmas, but I kind of got tired of that kind of that stuff because it, you would do that throughout the summer. You would just do, you know, summertime was the time to have the barbecue stuff, or not just barbecue, but like, you know, grill. But then you'd also do it on the holidays that happen throughout the summer. So it's kind of like you're double dipping in a sense. And my poor daughter, her birthday is right after the 4th of July. So we would always tie those things together when she was growing up. So we'd have just one cookout and cover both. So like, you know, with Megan, her birthday is near Christmas. So it's like, hey, here's your birthday card and your Christmas card and your present all in one for both. That covers both. We did, we did both. I put a little extra on it to cover both. So yeah, those, those kind of things. But we, as a nation, ingest so much crap as it is that even if you don't get tired of eating that food, eventually your body is going to say, enough, stop, give me a freaking carrot and get me out of this mess. I'm going to die. <laughs> and that's kind of great that we, you know, we I maybe recognize that and can like maybe not be like that. I've tried to in the last few years because I, I value my health and I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to lose weight and I'm trying to like make sure that my last few years on remaining years on this earth aren't like struggling to breathe and walk. I would like to enjoy that time. I, you know, I basically just, you know, abused myself throughout the, the entire, you know, 80s, 90s and into the early 2000s. And I'm finally getting around to making up for it. And hopefully I can, you know, extend that to a lot more time where it's not me just sitting around going, I wish I could die to actually wanting to do things. So that's another reason why I did it. But then also, you know, speaking of not wanting to die, uh, there's also the activities. Now, when I was in my adult years, but not married, I, with some friends, went over 4th of July weekend. We went uh, whitewater rafting. We went whitewater rafting, and that, my friends, is an experience in and of itself. If you don't know what you're doing, make sure you have some at least one person that knows what they're doing. And then make sure that person stays in the boat with you. <laughs> We had, we had gone one year and we, we lived near some white water, like, I mean, and not even like, that's like saying like, oh, I'm from Southwestern PA where we have mountains. No, those aren't mountains. Those are hills. You want to go see mountains, go to Colorado, go to Tennessee, go to California. You'll see mountains. That's nothing. That's, that's, you know, the elevation, your ear may pop, but it doesn't like you're going to die of, of a lack of oxygen when you get to the top. Um, we would, you know, so we would go to these whitewater rapids and we were not, you know, we didn't want to have, um, a guide take us down. We had a, a lifeguard who knew what he was doing and had done it before. So we figured that was good enough. And there was, f I think six of us, maybe five of us, five of us. Yeah. Five of us, uh, three guys, two girls. And we went and we grabbed uh, a raft and, and put in at one spot and like this you know we were as we were sitting there looking at all the information about the rapids that day 
uh, you know, the current and the time, whatever the, the you know, the uh, st- what kind of skill level do you need to do today? Um, we hear sirens going by. We're like, okay, well, they know we're here. <laughs> they know we're going to do this. Um, that wasn't the case. What we found out later was that somebody had died. <laughs> and like, and, and there's a very well-known area in these uh, th- this river where people have died. And they've actually had to, like, uh, change the landscape with, uh, I think, you know, some detonations, controlled explosives to uh, change the... Ch- you know, change the topography a little bit so that people don't die when they get around that area, around that rock formation. Uh, but still, people you know tend to get stuck and pulled under to uh, the undertow or whatever and, and die. So we, uh, you know, like, oh great, we're making fun of this. We didn't know, of course. But we get down, we start going down, you know, the rapids. Everything seems kind of cool. We're like, it's not like too awful. But then we were like, we're hitting a little rough spot, and I'm like, oh my god, what's going on? You know, what do we do, man? What do we do? Like the, my friend who, who is the, the the lifeguard who knows what he's doing, and they're like, um, he's outside the raft. He's I'm looking at him as he's swimming by us. So like, we're like, crap. So we grab him, we pull him back in, and he loses a hat. Of, you know, his his favorite hat in the world, which is funny in and of itself. But we get to the bottom, and we take a break, and we get, you know, we get situated. I'm like, okay, so how hard was that to get back into the boat? from out, you know, outside of it. And we took turns, like, in a little shallow area where it was just enough that you could, like, not be touching or, you know, just, like, you could could pick your feet up and, like, wade or or, or just float and then try to get yourself up over the edge of this raft. And it was not easy. It was not easy. If you do not have, you know, upper body strength, it's going to be a struggle. That was not the biggest struggle, though. The biggest struggle was we took the raft down, you know, we got all the way down again, and it's like, okay, we we didn't want to pay extra money because we're poor to have somebody come pick this raft up. We, th- we decided we could haul it back. Now, we could pick it up and, and carry it up over our... And we had to walk through the woods. So you have to you know account for your path width in order to carry this raft. But we had picked it up, put it up over our heads, and, and, and we found out that it was like ridiculousness because, you know, at least one person, and I'm not going to name names in all this, one person was barely even touching, so their fingers weren't even, like, touching the bottom of the raft, so they weren't even supporting any of the weight, and the other one was, like, just grazing it, and like, I'm helping, and you know you're not, you're just, you're just, your hands are there, they're not actually supporting any weight, so we, like, somebody had this brilliant idea, brilliant, brilliant, so brilliant idea, the, the idea to end all ideas, in fact, other ideas would be compared against this one to being the greatest of all time. Somebody had the great idea of saying, why don't we do this? Why don't we li- let all the air out of the raft and then we just carry it back under our arms? And that way everybody can support it and we can all walk back. Well, that was the dumbest thing ever and I am the person who came up with that idea. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> Because at that point, then it was like, we don't want to do this anymore. So it was just me and the three guys that carried it all the way back through the woods and returned it and then we're like you know what we're gonna just sit here and wade in the water for a little bit so we like left them there and we came back after a while we moved the car came back to pick them up so that was like you know we learned something that day it's like let's never go do this again and now that i'm in my late 40s almost to 50 i will probably never go white water rafting again just for the sheer fact that i can trip on open carpet and I really don't want to injure myself anymore. And we've been through having a an arm broken. And uh, right now we're dealing with the fact that, you know, the, the, the dog kind of like scratched or, or just bit or what. I don't know what she did to Megan's leg during like an a, event where another dog off leash came running at us. And she had to like try to protect everybody. And the dog kind of like just just spazzed out and she got hit. So her legs kind of like hurting. She like she went pretty deep. So, you know, we, we, uh, it, this is this is rough. And it was rough last year with a dog that was in her, you know, senior years. It's even harder when you have a puppy that, like, you have to constantly watch. Like, I need, I, puppy needs attention. Puppy needs to expend energy. And then you throw into the fact that there's going to be a, a, a massive holiday with fireworks. And it's going to be that time, that many times worse. So, yeah. So, I mean, that was like, the, you know, that was the thing, though. That was the whole idea behind having... Um, these these holiday, you know, the summer holidays and, and what you can do. And it was always a mandatory thing to go do something. But now it's kind of like, I don't want to do anything. Usually about this time of year, my family, um, the farm that we have, like within the family where my dad grew up, 
there's always a long-standing tradition of, you know, the far, the fourth on the farm, where come rain, come shine, come down, and we'll have a picnic and do all the other stuff. And we've done it, you know, now for how many years? Ever since my dog, I mean, we have at least the last, you know, I, I've gone a majority of the last 16 years. Um, this year, my family that, that lived there, they went on vacation with um, the in, their in-laws. Um, so, who live like pretty far out of town. So when they got back, they weren't going to be like, that was like a, a lot of people. That was like, you know, five or six, seven people that was going to be there that not going to be there because they were on vacation with them. So they're, you know, bowing out. They live like upstate. My other cousin, uh, who doesn't live at the farm, but lives like in, like, I was just there out towards Gettysburg. They're not going to be there. So that leaves just about maybe like, you know, two or three people attending. And because they were on vacation and they didn't get a chance to really get things, you know, usually you want to get things done before, ahead of time so you can just put things together and go. Going on vacation right up until the point where the holiday happens and you have to clean the house and get all the food ready and do all that stuff and you got two kids, it's kind of hard. And I'm like, you know what? Listen, we don't know what the dog's going to do with the, with the fireworks yet because this is new to us. Now we do know. We don't know what the dog's going to do. Maybe we should just, you know, you guys just relax. Take a weekend off enjoy just maybe get some pizza have your you know my uncle your parents come over and just do that let not let's not maybe you know i'm like i'm like try it's okay to do nothing i'm like i'm trying to be like that you know self-care guru like you know don't do anything just relax you're doing what you need to be doing and they're gonna you know not do anything for the holiday they're gonna just chill i'm like that's great because that's what i'm gonna do too so you know no sense in having something and I'm kind of like that at my point. I'm like, I don't want to go do things. I like, I used to go want to go do things and I don't want to go do things. I did. I don't want to go do things because it's like, you have to take care of the animal and you don't know what the animal is going to do. And you don't want to put the animal through all that without you there. And you don't know what they're going to, how they're going to react. And they need to look to you for support. Um, you have to go. It's very hot or it could be raining depending on the way the weather's been this recently. And it's just like this. I don't want to really be involved. I want to like stay in my home, my pajamas. I don't want to have to get ready. I don't have to like shave. I don't have to do all that stuff. You know, and then that's, you know, do I have to shave? Oh, like, yeah, you're a guy. What are you, you're like, you know, you're going to like work at Disney. But I mean, you know, that could apply to anybody who, I don't want to shave. I don't want to wear shorts. Um, but I, I don't want to like, and I don't want to put anybody else out. And I don't really drink that much. So it's not like it's, it's a big, huge to do. You're, you're, you're kind of like wasting money on that kind of stuff. Like just do something at home. Maybe, maybe take some time and reflect on, on your family and, and that stuff at home and, and just, you know, keep it small, keep it simple, keep it to the point where it's like manageable for everybody. And you don't have to like f worry about things. I mean, like everything else in this world that we have been through in the last two to three years, maybe we're not ready to just ramp up real quick. You know, maybe we need to like ease into this shit. And maybe it's just a case of, we don't have to do that at all anymore. Like we don't really have to do these big, huge things. I, I would not want, I mean, I've been to downtown Pittsburgh on the 4th of July. It's nuts. It's crazy. And you got to park far away and you're going to do lots of, and it's just, I'm not all about that stuff or going, you know, to an amusement park or going to, uh, you know, a, a, a festival or something like that, or a concert, anything like that. It's just, I'm, you know, here's the thing to give you an idea. I made the biggest mistake of my life taking my daughter to the zoo on free zoo day, because guess what? Everybody else is going to the zoo on free zoo day. We got stuck for an hour in traffic, just trying to get to the road that gets into the zoo. And at that time, my sister was, you know, still able to go do stuff. And they got stuck and they went to the wrong, they, they, they made a wrong turn, ended up going a bridge across from the zoo and it took them an additional hour to get back. Now, my family, like my brother, my sister and I, we, but we all like went as families to go to the zoo on zoo day because of our kids. And it ended up being that like my brother got down there before I did and he was leaving as we were just pulling into the parking lot. <laughs> They had been through the entire zoo by the time we got in. And they had just, they had gotten in when we hit the traffic. They're like, where are you at? We just got in. I'm like, okay, we're here. And we're, we're in traffic. He's like, okay, well, we're done. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that was quick. 
So it's like it took that much. It took that. Well, it wasn't really quick, actually. It took that much time for us to go through traffic as it did for them to go through the zoo, and this just the amount of people, the sheer amount of people that it can congregate in one spot because of an event. And I would just rather go when there's nobody there. Like I, Bailey and I used to go Chris or um, um, you know I used to go grocery shopping on the weekends with my daughter Sundays at like one o'clock in the afternoon. Because I knew that's when everybody would be home watching football and nobody would be at the store. So we'd go, have lunch, get our stuff, and then have to worry about, like, getting to things and people. And I didn't have to, like, you know, constantly pay attention to her. She can walk ahead of me. She can walk behind me. I, I can keep an eye on her. Like, you're not fighting through people. I, it's just, no, you don't want to even deal with that kind of, like, mess. And maybe some people are. Maybe some people are just more uh, hardwired into handling that kind of crowd stuff. I, I've been, i paid my dues. I don't want to do it anymore. Nothing fun happens in big crowds like that <laughs> at my age, and I just don't care. But that's just me. And, you know, I don't know when I'm going to get back to doing stuff like that, if I do it at all, ever. But that's just me. Your mileage may vary. So I think we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, you can tell, you know, hopefully this isn't the last week you had 10 digits uh, on your hands. Uh, hopefully you've come back with all your fingers and toes. Uh, eyeballs and everything else and all in the right place and still working um, because my gosh you know nothing says America like a big giant inflatable eagle in a Uncle Sam outfit sitting outside the warehouse of the the fireworks store <laughs> nearby near the turnpike and you know wow that's that's an amazing thing to see and I'm going to be seeing it in about five minutes um, but <laughs> yeah we're stupid I know we are all right, with that, I want to thank you all for listening. If you like what you're seeing and you're hearing, please subscribe to the channel. Hey, drop me a like. Um, buy some merch that helps keep me going. And if you want to really do it, buy me a coffee. Links are all in the description. We'll talk to you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.